Oh, oh, yeah. Do you have any idea? Of course they don't. ICS has been teasing me this whole time. You suck with this gun in Modern Warfare 2 like every other gun in that game. It's beautiful. It's ugly. That's what makes it beautiful. Like how a Fox Body Mustang isn't as flashy as a 67 GT500, but can still impress people if they know what they're looking at. Like how you had a thing for that not so overly pretty girl in your junior year of high school. She was different, maybe dorky and moody, but smart. I like smart girls. I like gothic girls. And I never really had an answer for why I did. Yes, this is still an airsoft review, and this time, it's over a very rare bird, or at least that's true for the state of Texas. ICS, I love you guys. I hope my pile of galils makes that apparent enough. And I say this once again because now I'm an owner of an ICS L86A2 LSW. The support weapon that I've been told doesn't exist. Uh, he probably knows what he's talking about. Tiny schlappy? Little schlappy? Big schlappy. In this review, we'll be going over everything that makes this scrumptious support weapon great from the unboxing to the internals. I'll be showing all the stuff that could be better, as well as a list of a few things that would make this old ICS stand out even more in 2018, 2019, and so on. Because if there's a list of guns that deserves an update, then the ICS L86A2 LSW is on that list. I have to thank ICS Airsoft for sending me this awesome piece that will be linked down below in the description, as well as links to other reviews so you can get even more information if needed. But with all that read and said, Let's start this off where we always begin with the unboxing. Seeing an ICS box is always a treat for me. I have stacks of them thanks to my many ICS rifles in my collection, so I'll admit that I was a little bit happy to see this one. Graphics are just graphics though, so inside is where the real party begins. Starting off, we have a very well put together manual. This manual gives you dozens of diagrams with all the information you'll need to operate and tear down the L86 and even the more standard L85s that ICS has available. If you don't have access to the internet, then this manual will help you understand everything. Next up is this brochure that will show off so much more ICS goodness from M4s, AKs, pistols, MP5s, and even the ICS M1 Garand and the Scott Hollenbeck specials. Who's taught anyway? I love that ICS includes these extra fuses, by the way. Whatever to prevent simple things from ruining a customer's enjoyment of a product is much appreciated. You'll also get the standard cleaning slash and jamming rod, as well as a black metal 450 round M4 high cap. Then you'll find an orange barrel cap that will be over the end of the flash hider. These are pretty useful to me as I add these onto my guns that I have in storage so dust doesn't go down their barrels. Now with all that stuff out of the way, we can now enjoy ourselves. We can now marvel at the weird beauty before us. It's like seeing a Dodge Viper and walking up to it to see that it's engine swapped with the Z06 Corvette. This is the gun that large men in comparison to myself named something like Sally or Marilyn, or Margaret Thatcher. The L86A2 light support weapon is one of those weird guns that you hardly ever see in the US, like some kind of anomaly. It's not because it's a bad gun, it's just so low on the radar like a UFO. Thank God ICS were the ones that made it, because then its reputation wasn't tarnished throughout Airsoft. The ICS L86 came in at about 9 pounds. It's definitely lighter than an M249, and this is nice since the whole support weapon is made from steel and aluminum. The length from the tip of the flash hider all the way to the butt pad is 36 inches or 91.4 centimeters, which is shorter than an M14 at 44 inches. The inner barrel is however shorter than the M14's 20 inch barrel at 17.72 inches, so there's the trade-off I guess. At the end of the barrel, we do have an L86 style flash hider that I've been told has no threads underneath for the addition of suppressors or any other add-ons. This was true of the GNG flash hider as well, but that doesn't really matter to me since I'm going to leave this gun stock when it comes to the externals. Wrapped along the elongated barrel assembly is the steel girder and bipod. This does add on some weight up front, but it's not unmanageable since it's only slightly front heavy thanks to the gearbox being up against the rear of the weapon. 
On the girder itself that would stabilize the real weapon's barrel, you'll find the bipod. Just pull this latch back and pinch the bipod legs together as you pull them out of the slot on the girder and bam, the bipod is deployed. The bipod does swivel up front pretty radically, which was very annoying when I had the rifle placed like this, just for the weapon to topple over and knock things all over the place. This is correct for the real L86 though, so the ICS is free of all criticism here. Just set the L86 to one side and save yourself any headaches. The bipod on the L86 is pretty beefy, but not too heavy like the BAR's bipod. I loved how the feet on this bipod will dig into the ground, or whatever else you place it on, and how the legs can be lengthened or retracted with spring tension. I found that to be pretty slick. Deploying the bipod might be a chore, as you need two hands to do it, but I noticed you can just swivel the legs from side to side so the bipod would go back in place. Further back, we had the shortened down L85A2 handguard with some nicely detailed trademarks in the polymer plastic. This handguard is pretty sturdy, despite all the cutouts and how it opens to expose your battery connections. This space will be enough to place any 9.6 volt nunchuck or any standard size 8.4 or even 11.1 lipos. This is an older gun, so I'd recommend lower power lipos though. I love the attention to detail that ICS put into even this section. The disassembly of the piston didn't even need to be a thing but that's the stuff that makes ICS guns stand out. And yes, the front sling loop can be switched to either side. As for the included removable iron sights, I'd say that ICS did great here as well. I even had one player who never used an L85 or L86 before say that these are the cleanest iron sights that he's ever seen. The front sight is adjustable for elevation as long as you push in this button with something thin enough to fit into it. After you do that, then just turn the dial. The rear carry handle slash rear sight is then adjustable for windage with two apertures available to choose from. However, if you still don't like these sights, then just remove them with the screws you see here and throw on a sight unit small arms trilux or SUSAT. This will go onto the 14 millimeter rail underneath the carry handle. You will have to get an adapter rail to fit anything else onto here. So don't say that I didn't warn you. For the booty section of Big Schlappy, we have a bit going on here, like the very sturdy flip up shoulder rest next to the ambidextrous rear sling point that was actually very useful when using the L86 on its bipod. I mean, the rear grip would also be useful if this was the real deal, but at least I can answer the nearly 100 comments regarding this grip now. You're supposed to pull this into your shoulder when using the bipod. Makes sense now? No? Then we're moving on anyway, so keep up. The butt pad admittingly is not as comfortable as the thick rubber padding on the GNG L85s, but the cheek riser is more rubberized. Basically, the material build is just swapped between these two guns for the cheek riser and the butt pad. As for the controls in the rear, that's where things get a bit opinionated. The left hand bolt release, well, it still doesn't do anything. The fire selector, I feel like I can pull it right out of the gun, but it does click very loudly and positively. The bolt assembly runs smoothly and there's no electronic blowback to worry about or disable, but oddly enough, the right hand bolt release is again swapped around from the GNG model. The ICS will release the bolt when pushed down and the GNG will release the bolt when pushed up. And in my opinion, much more cleanly than the ICS model. The takedown pins could also be a bit tighter as you can just jiggle these all around with your bare fingertips, but something that really disappointed me on the GNG was the mag release which completely kicked the bucket a couple weeks after my review while playing with the rifle. That was due to the pin holding it in place being too thin to stay in place which the ICS model does not have to worry about. And the ICS releases magazines even easier than the GNG. So far, I'd say that if ICS were to remake their L85 line, then I'd recommend that they focus on the controls like the selected switches and clean up the bolt release. Update the hop-up dial to a more preferred rotary style hop-up, since these older M4 hop-ups have lost their popularity. Also, why not update the internals with a MOSFET or an electronic trigger unit to delete the sloppiness of the trigger that bullpups tend to have. The body looks and feels great, so maybe rework the butt pad with some thick rubber and you'll be golden. The safety cross bolt above the trigger will still pop back and forth nicely, and the space inside of the pistol grip is a great spot for small items like a AA battery. So that should wrap up the controls of the ICS L86A2 LSW. So up front, we're looking great, but towards the rear of the ICS L86 needs some work. But back when this came out, this LSW was top notch. It just needs a good update is all I'm saying. Times have changed, but let's see what it can do at range. To put it lightly, it's good. 
the L86 at 150 feet with 0.28 gram BBs is no challenge. I'd even say that you should try out 32 gram BBs if you'd like. So with an upgraded barrel and hop up, I can see you hitting targets well past 350 to 400 feet. Be aware of the US stock FPS readings though. The ICS 86 a 2 gave me readings of around 420 to 430 feet per second with a 0.2 gram BB and 11.1 .1 Titan power battery. But thanks to the adjustable spring guide in the rear of the gearbox, you can adjust the FPS by 75 feet per second. So if you really want to, you can make this into a CQB gun. I wouldn't recommend it, but at least you have the option. Inside the version 2 split gearbox that ICS is synonymous with, you'll find an ICS Turbo 3000 motor with steel gears and 7mm bearings. The major advantage will be that variable spring guide that I've never seen in any other gun out on the market. Can you imagine being able to switch up the FPS on any AG from 420 to about 340 to 350 feet per second? That would be a lifesaver to a lot of people out there. As for performance, again this squad weapon is pretty solid. Even when I ran this gun at D14 Airsoft, it held together and got me a couple easy quad kills in a game of attack and defend. It is a bit strange, and people will look at you if you run an L86, so get used to that. In conclusion, the ICS L86 A2 light support weapon is on my list of guns that I needed to get for this year but it also needs an update like I said. With range and FPS already in a great place thanks to the long inner barrel and adjustable main spring inside that drops so much velocity, if this gun had a MOSFET and electronic trigger unit, then that would make a huge difference. This is a gun I've been wanting for a long time now, so I still love it the way it is. I mean, my ICS Galils all have their own inherent problems, but I still hold those at the top of my preferred guns list. This gun is going to be a complete hit and miss with a lot of people out there, and that's understandable. It's not a basic M4, and it's not trying to be the next revolutionary gun that every company will try to copy into the grave. This is seen as just another L85, this is seen as just another bullpup, so throw it away. But to all those other people that love to shake up the norm while still being able to use the same magazines as everyone else is using, to support your team with something other than an M249 or an RPK to make some people question what you're even running, then I salute you. The ICS 086 A2 LSW will remain one of my favorite guns in my collection and it didn't even need to be hip with everything else out there to do it. This review is in honor of all the other classic airsofters who made a video on this gun and I hope you enjoyed it. I need to thank everyone at ICS who made this review possible and who always love to hear what I have to say about their products, both good and bad. They are probably the most understandable people I've worked with when it comes to manufacturers. Links to the website and to the L85 line will be in the description as well as links to a couple other reviews on the ICS L86. I'd also like to thank you all for making this happen. The YouTube silver play button came in a couple days ago for surpassing 100,000 subscribers. And I made sure to put it right next to my father who made this channel possible by pushing me to make this quirky channel of mine. You guys are also the ones that made this all happen for me and I want you all to know that I appreciate it every day I wake up to see everything you've had a hand in building. I just really wanted to thank you all for that. And thank you to these past sexy commenters and the notification squad who always turn in as early as possible to spank that like button. Shoutouts go to the people who are also watching this as it premieres. This review was a blast making and I hope you enjoyed it. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck and I will be sure to see you all next time.